you're about to do in the midst of your people, and what you're about to do in the hearts of all that are in this room on today. We thank you for a proceeding word, a rhema word, a logos word, your word, God, a living word, a powerful word, a word to just make alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. A word that will speak to every dry place, a word that will speak to dry bones and make them and bring them to life. We thank you for a river, um, a reverence, a reverence word, mm -hmm. hallelujah, word of reverence, hallelujah, yeah. yes. with all power and might that you give. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, so you ready for that word on today? Amen. All right. The spirit of divination. What we're going to speak on today, the spirit of divination. A lot of you have heard of that word, and um, on today I'm going to just bring an aspect of it, not total, not the total meaning of it, because there, it, it entails so much. Uh, a, a lot of is involved when you when you talk about divination. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We live in a society where we believe knowledge is relevant for all phases of our lives. We want the inside scoop. How many of you want, you know that? We want the inside scoop. We want to know. That's why we got reality TV and all those things is a big fad right now. You know, everybody trying to be, not nosy, but we're, we have, we're a society that's very inquisitive concerning not only just the God things, but everyday life. Yeah. Amen. So we want to know, are we going to get married? We want to know this. And when we're 17 and 18, we want to know, are we going to get married? Are we going to be rich or successful? Will we live a long and, prosper long and prosperous life? Will we be happy? That is really funny. People, did, you know, they used to call it Cleo line. I never did. But even when I wasn't saved in the Lord, I never called it. I didn't feel a need to. But they want to know if you, um, you know, they call those lines and they want to know if they're going to be happy. You know. Um, when will I meet Mr. or Mrs. Wright? So we want to know everything concerning our lives right now. Right now, we don't want to wait, you know, and go through a process and, and get, even for, for the most part, get in the Lord to try to find out, you know, what he has to say about our life. But well, we're we under presumption, and you find out that that word, that definition spirit operates too out of presumption. I just heard that. I didn't even put that in my notes. Am I yeah, right? that's just right. Yeah. Exactly. Presumption. Um, so, and then we want to know, what does tomorrow hold for me? You know, when the Bible clearly speaks in Matthews, the book of Matthews, about um, not concerning yourself about tomorrow, for tomorrow has its own cares. Mm -hmm. You know, why worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, and all of those things. But today, you know, is sufficient in itself. Amen? And so some people will consult with other means for acquiring this information. Rather than coming to God, and I just mentioned that, you know, you got hotline, hotline, you call them up on the hotline. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, but um, so they would do that instead of coming to God that He may that He may give them life, mm -hmm. because ultimately we know, you know, a lot of us that have been out there and we've given our lives to Christ, we know that without Him, if we had known then, if we had known earlier on, and I've always said this, if I had known when I was twenty, you know, what this life was about, I didn't receive Him until I was uh, 30, 32 years old, and I'm like, wow, that's too old. I feel like now if I could only reach out and grab some of the ones, you know, and let them know that don't wait till you get 50 and 60. Don't wait until you're 40. Don't, don't wait. You know, why would you wait for all the riches and glory of Christ Jesus until you get 50? You know, half of your life. You know, when you can get, get that right now, when you can have it at an early age. I, I used to beat myself up about that as if I could get back those times. I used to beat myself up about, you know, boy, I wish I could get that back when I was 20 and be able to be able to live a different life, be able to understand prosperity. That it's not about, you know, um, man's way of getting success. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and finances and all that, and, and, you know, walking around mere men and all of that. So, but thank God now. Thanks be unto God right now. Amen? Amen. 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 But, so then, yeah, so I don't know where I put this. Let's first take a look at what divination is. A part of what divination is, I'm not, like I mentioned, going into all, every aspect of that. Meaning, because it doesn't tell a lot. There's a lot there, and we may continue on with this maybe sometime, sometime soon. soon. Yeah, I want to jump um, into that subject because it's very, mm -hmm. it's important, especially being a prophetic house. Yeah. Yes. You know, if you're going to be a prophetic people, you'll find out in the scriptures that the spirit of divination always like to, mm -hmm. it's like the wheat and tares concept. Yeah. So, Come on. Wow. Yeah. in the best. So there's some manners. Yeah. And, and I believe that's probably why you came up with this, that you heard it so strong. I've heard it that, for a while, yeah. actually. And so once they begin, you begin to expound on what it what it is and the characteristics. Well, not all the characteristics, but the main thrust, the main right. theme of why it exists. Mm -hmm. It's going to help them out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So let's first take a look at what divination is. Divination is the act of obtaining secret knowledge, mm -hmm. especially that which relates to the future, mm -hmm. by means within the reach almost exclusively of special classes of men. Um, the word divination itself from De deals. Now, let, now repeat that. Uh -huh. Repeat that. The, the definition. Divination is the act of obtaining secret knowledge, especially that which relates to the future, by means within the reach almost exclusively of special classes of men. Wow. I kept hearing that when you were sharing it with me. Uh -huh. Secret knowledge mm -hmm. is trying to ascertain wisdom or thoughts or thinking or concepts that God has <laughs> prepared for us. Or God has an ordained for us. So even in churches, divination can still be in operation. And I believe that it operates mostly among the gifts. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. And that's true. I mean, I don't think I wrote this down, but because all through, uh, you know, the Old Testament, um, pretty much the, um, they were encouraged to, to, you know, to do these works, certain works. And I'm not going to speak of all those works. I don't want to get ahead of anything but it was encouraged you know it was a way of life mm -hmm. you know for them throughout the old testament um pretty much mm -hmm. um so un um, underlying oh okay i mentioned that it's from deus d-e-u-s god mm -hmm. or d-i-v-u-s pertaining to god and it carries with it the notion that the information obtained came from deity from a deity a, a, a deity, deity a god a god a god not our god the god the one and only true we live in God. Let's just could be make God that itself. Uh -huh. Self is a deity. Yeah, it's true. You know what I'm saying? So our own opinions uh -huh. wow. can become a deity because stubbornness is the sin of idolatry. Yes. And we can have idols in our heart that could uh, also give us information. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Y'all got that? Yeah. In other words, there's some things you prefer to have that God has to prepare for you. Uh -huh. And so you, and that's one thing we was talking about, climbing up another, another way. way. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that's what, that was the problem that Jesus had in John 10 with the uh, Pharisees. They were Come climbing on. up another way. Yeah. But then while you're on that note, you know, look at the um, children of Israel, the, uh, the, the Tower of Babel, when they built the, uh, the Tower the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were building to, to reach something. They didn't want to wait. They wanted mm -hmm. to begin to reach up to something higher. You know, that they wanted to reach the heavens, it say. They built it, we're building it up to the heavens. And, and whenever you do that, you know, you want to reach higher places that were, were at that time was not marked out in, in the, what do you call that, you know, in their territory for them to do anyway. Right. You know, it wasn't allowed for exactly. them to do that. And that's why God went ahead and scattered them. And that, it's other messages within that too. But actually you can get that out of there that they wanted, they were trying to reach for something higher than themselves. They were going outside of God in the confinements of what God had, you know, um, uh, allotted to them. Amen. You can have a lust for knowledge. Mm -hmm. Pat brought that up. She talked yeah. about positions and titles. You can have a lust for knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things just because you, uh, you can get around certain people, and certain people can move in certain um, measures of grace, and you'll find yourself wanting to be like them. You want to have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's some areas that your faculties, your senses can't perceive. Mm -hmm. And we have to be willing to say, okay, God, I want you to lead me to the place that you prepare for me personally. There's some things that God has designed for your spiritual makeup. Yeah. Right? May not be for somebody else's. And so we have to be able to uh, 
allow the trust the spirit of God Come to on. lead us into those places. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So underlying all methods, because I, as I mentioned, and I will mention all, all of the different methods of divination, but underlying um, those methods of divination, there lay the belief that certain superhuman spiritual beings, gods, gods or spirits, possess the secret knowledge, as we just mentioned, possess the secret knowledge desired by men, and that missions they are willing to impart it. Look at Adam and Eve. Okay, we're familiar about the garden, Adam and Eve, and what happened, and how after a while they resorted to disobeying God's word. They wanted more. They were not satisfied with what God had revealed. And so they allowed another voice to come in and interrupt what God had already gave them. Mm -hmm. Hence opening the door of desire for more, for more which caused them to lust after revelation. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember what that serpent said, said to them? Amen. Surely if you eat the fruit, you will not die. You know, and, and, and only God doesn't want you. He forbids you from eating it because he know in that day like you'll be like him. So you will you acquire the same knowledge and revelation as God. And that's why he wants to keep you from it. Right? That's what's wow. happening in the body of Christ, bro. Come on, yeah. Come on. You know, we, that's what we want. We want to be like something that God never planned for us to be. Wow. You have to find out your identity. Find out what God has called you to be. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's powerful because even it goes um, back to what I mentioned in the beginning, how, you know, like, uh, for instance, the, um, the hotline, uh, Cleo, yes, Cleo, and different other avenues, you know, instead of going through the God process mm -hmm. and allowing him to reform you and, right and, and refresh and re restore you to back to yeah. your original state, and that's fr from him, mm -hmm. and, you know, and all his attributes and everything that you're supposed to have, <laughs> you would rather push aside what he's doing and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for the alternative. That's what it is. It's an alternative. Say that again. That's good. It's an alternative. Amen? <laughs> One thing that's real in, uh, tragic and, 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 and it's, well, uh, it's a detriment to your development is when you get connected to a spirit of divination or you allow it to operate in your life where it removes the process element. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's always cut the chase. Yeah. How you can get it easy. So it never allows you to go through the process of allowing God to mature you, to chisel you, to to uh, mold you, to shape you, you know, into the person that God wants to be. So it always shows you the end. Yes. And it comes, wow. yeah, it always Without shows, the middle. Without the middle. Cut out the middle, man. Cut out the middle. Cut out the chase. I ain't chasing nothing. I just want to see him done. Yep. Just whip a magic wand. Give it to me now. You know, and give it to me now. <laughs> but you will be led by your own desires to take alternative measures to gain wisdom and revelations. Yeah. A lot of people are led by that. That's good. So you can see here the spirit of divination at work right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. And, um, in the 